Hi everyone, in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. I really appreciate all the support on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. It means so much to me and the Nelson Hilliard team. And make sure you remember to click the notification bell when you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the latest shows. Check out our latest cloud tech blogs on migration, cybersecurity, blockchain and all things cloud tech. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest blogs. Below there is a link. And watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. All of the shows are also on Stitcher and iTunes as podcasts. I've included a link below. Remember to connect and reach out to me and my team. Below in the description box are the social media links for LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This week, VMware buys cloud health technologies to strengthen its cloud operations platform. VMware plans to combine the cloud health platform with its existing Wavefront secure state and cloud automation platforms in an effort to offer a pit crew-like service that manages a company's multi-cloud operational needs. Raghu Ragaram, COO of Products and Cloud Services for VMware said, Cloud health delivers benefits to our customers across cost management, resource optimization, granular visibility and reporting. Cloud Health also brings VMware a substantial customer base of around 3,000 that includes Yelp, Dow Jones, Zendesk, Skyscanner and SHI. VMware expects the deal to close in the third quarter of the company's fiscal year of 2019. This week, Air Canada reveals mobile data breach, passport numbers potentially exposed. Air Canada has notified customers of a data breach involving the airline's mobile application which may have led to the exposure of passport details belonging to 20,000 customers. While 20,000 customers represents only approximately 1% of the firm's full customer base, passport numbers have also now been thrown into the mix. Profile data including names, email addresses, aeroplan number, passport numbers, nexus numbers, known traveller numbers, genders, birth dates, nationalities, passport expiry dates, passport countries of issue and countries of residence can all be updated to the app. Any of this data may have been improperly accessed. This week, Chinese police are investigating a major security breach of a hotel group. Chinese hotel group Huazhou Group has reportedly suffered a security breach that has compromised 500 million pieces of customer data, including that of 150 accounts currently on sale on the dark web. The chain is one of China's largest, encompassing more than 3,900 hotels across 370 cities in the country. As of June 30, 2018, Wazoo's customer loyalty program had 113 million members who accounted for 75% of room nights booked in the second quarter of this year. Established in 2005, the company is listed on the Nasdaq. Information leaked in the breach comprised 240 million pieces of content related to hotel stay such as name, credit card details and mobile number as well as 123 million pieces of registration data recorded on the group's official website such as user ID and login PIN. Another 130 million pieces of check-in data was also leaked including a birthday, home address according to the state-run media China Daily. This week sees Australia's transition to multi-cloud is outpacing global peers. Australia was the leading country in the world for virtualization and according to Duncan Hewitt, the senior vice president and general manager of VMware's business in Asia Pacific and Japan, the country's transition to consuming multi-cloud environments is accelerating faster than anywhere else as well. It is the way people operate and if you continue down the who is who in Australia, they're running VMware and that's continued to accelerate. The difference now is they're actually adding more workloads as well. So we're now starting to see what I would call a remediation of clients that have multiple environments who are now deciding they're going to run a core system and a private cloud and are going to move as many workloads as they can to the private cloud. Australia is heavily virtualized and when you step back and say, well, what's going on there? It comes back to that fundamental practice of being fast adopters of next generation technologies. 
I'm Brad Nelson. Thanks for watching this week's Cloud Tech News. Get in touch if you or your company have a Cloud Tech story that you'd like us to feature on the show. You can email us at media at nelsonhilliard.com. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also check out the latest shows with David Lindicum and the podcast link in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe, and keep our clouds secure.